Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Outrun the Neon Sun. Today I'm going to be talking about what the heck Arcade 1 Up is doing. So thanks for joining this channel. If you like it, please subscribe. Let's get right into it. So is this Cade 1UP doing things that we like or is it doing things that we don't like? Is it just kind of like, what are they doing right now? They have a couple leaks that I want to talk about and are they just kind of blowing the proverbial smoke up our sails? Let's just put it that way. And if they are doing it on purpose, how do we as a community navigate what's going on? There are so many people, they just want to get in on the newest releases because they're all about clickbait. They want to be the first ones to drop it. Hey, I got the news so that we can get the algorithms going, whatever it may be. But this is a very interesting time that we have as fans of arcades in general, of at-home arcades. And if you're anything like me, I'm kind of going, like, what does this stuff mean? Like, is it true? Are these things true? How do we navigate this? How do we spend our time kind of thinking about this critically and kind of going, is this the way to do it? Is this something that I should be trusting and putting my hope in? What is it that's going on? Now, as a community, we ourselves kind of tend to follow the crowd, which we kind of really need to kind of step back from and go, maybe we shouldn't just follow all the hype that's happening and we get our hearts set on these things that are, might be coming out. Now John D kind of did a snafu recently when he did a tweet and he had to pull the tweet down in regards to another YouTuber who kind of put up some news saying, hey, if you do this to your Mortal Kombat cabinet, if you press it so many times, then you're gonna unlock certain things. And it even got so big as like the owner of the Mortal Kombat guy, that uh, he was like saying, no, this isn't true. Obviously it wasn't true, it was full on sarcasm, but John D kind of got in a little bit of trouble. And then he got in a little bit of trouble in regards to Glenn's Retro Show. There was a huge kind of issue going on there, in which incidentally, I know that Glenn's Retro Show and I know that our K1UP both had mutual benefits from that relationship. Now, whether they cut ties uh, because of those issues, but uh, we, don't, we don't necessarily need to go there, but we kind of need to think about that logically as well. Glenn's Retro Show isn't hurting because of all the hype that's been happening. And I know he's got some cabinets he's putting out, he's got some sticks, and it's a huge blessing that, that he's able to do that and get the publicity that he has and people are supporting him, which is awesome. He's a great guy. But then you have Arcade One, one Up that is trying to protect its IP and it's trying to say, look, we need to have all the rights. We need to have all the control over what's gonna be happening with our product. That makes perfect sense as well. So given these two variables that have happened recently, I think we as a community have to move on. We've gotta get beyond these kind of infighting, these things that are happening. We need to interject a little bit of positivity on what's happening in this at-home community, these at-home arcades that are so amazing. And they're really incredible when you think about it. Now the first leak that Arcade One Up put out this is a long, long time ago, was Time Crisis. Time Crisis, if you guys remember, we got this little image of what the cab might look like, and everybody's like, oh, that doesn't look that good. And it kind of looks like it's on the, the rise of what we're gonna be expecting this year because there's not a lot coming out. So we're just assuming there's a lot of assumptions being made with Time Crisis. Also, there was a leak on a website, I believe in Australia, or some random thing like that saying, that you could pre-order it potentially, that it's gonna be coming soon. Second, most recently, as of this morning, uh, at the time of this recording, uh, which I'll probably post in a couple days, but the, uh, the Fast and the Furious was on the actual pamphlet of one of the RK1 Up uh, that just came out. I think P-Dubs was the first one to put that out and everybody and their mother is kind of reposting, hey, this is the next RK1 Up, the Fast and the Furious. Now we kind of have to stop and ask ourselves, is this the way to do it? Are they doing this on purpose? Is this something that they're actually doing to try to get the community excited, to get to talking about it? What are they doing? What is going on with Arcade 1UP? So first I wanna ask, are you excited for the Time Crisis cabinet if it comes out? I mean, obviously I think a lot of us would be excited about it. I think it's a pretty great game. A lot of people, it was very popular in the arcades, but is it something that you really wanna see kind of come out? Is that why we're purchasing? Because they're fun. Now, don't get me wrong, that's a massive, massive reason to buy arcades at home is because they're so much fun. But what made Arcade 1UP just kind of go into the stratosphere of popularity? So as you know, a lot of people on YouTube are posting that there's a new Fast and Furious thing. Is this, is this what we really want? Is this what the community needs? Is this really what we really kind of want to focus on? In other words, we have all of these leaks, these a couple of leaks that have happened. And we as YouTubers can get really excited and get hyped up on these. Like the Time Crisis is just an exciting cabinet. Don't get me wrong, I'm probably not going to purchase it. Then you have the Fast and the Furious, which is the next racing cabinet. That's pretty exciting as well, but I'm probably not gonna get that because I already have the OutRun cabinet that I absolutely love. I never got the Ridge Racer, but the, oh well. Now the average consumer, and I would argue I'm the average consumer, is really been purchasing all these cabinets for a long time. 
and now it's kind of like an idea where space is becoming such a limited reality. So I see a lot of people now selling their arcade cabinets on eBay or uh, OfferUp or Mercari or what have you, and just to make room for what might be coming out. And then a lot of people might get super boned because they don't come out with what we want. And that's not necessarily a healthy thing too. My encouragement is to wait on what's happening, wait on what's being put out there rather than assuming things because we don't know anything. Right now, Fast and Furious isn't a for sure. Right now, Time Crisis is not a for sure. It's fun to speculate, but don't purchase anything yet or don't sell anything yet because you may not get what you want. Each person has their own litmus test of what it is that is gonna make them wanna buy. For me, it's nostalgia. So if they put out these Golden Age cabinets, like Robotron or Qbert, yeah, I'm first in line. I would love to see them do a track and field. I, I saw a preview on a, a show about a year ago where they are kind of saying, look, we have track and field coming up as a pre-purchase, and it never came out. So imagine if people were selling all their cabinets thinking I'm going to make room for track and field, and it never came out because it hasn't. It's been over a year since that was even like kind of hinted at or leaked, so to speak. See, over on my Discord channel, a lot of us have been talking and we've been communicating yeah, we're kind of excited, but some of us aren't that excited about Fast and the Furious because we already have OutRun or Ridge Racer. Now, best, uh, buystuff.com or buystuffarcades.com has this uh, mod that you can do for your OutRun cabinet that I'm actually really interested in doing. Rather than buying a brand new cabinet, I can spend $250 and mod mine and get 150 racing games on it. Now that's something that appeals to me more than actually getting a Fast and Furious cabinet. Now what is more on this Buy Stuff website that you can get this, and I'll, I'll, I'll try to put a link in the, the comment section below. You can actually link two cabinets, two racing cabinets, which I only have outrun. So if I did get Fast and Furious, I could actually link them if I upgrade both of them to have 150 games in each and they can play each other, which is something that I've always wanted to do. In fact, my, my kids have always wanted that on a racing cab. I almost bought a full size Sega Rally cabinet from a, a guy in San Bernardino for $700, but I ended up not purchasing that because it was of, of space. Now, if I could have two three-quarter cabs side by side racing against each other, that would be huge. That would be a reason that I would think about getting the Fast and Furious cabinet. But do you want that? Is that something that is creating nostalgia for you, or is it just a really cool game? So if nostalgia is one of the running reasons on why you think you want to get involved with Arcade 1-Up, then does Time Crisis appeal to you? Does Fast and Furious appeal to you? That's a good question I think we need to ask ourselves. So what made Arcade 1-Up so kind of just go into the stratosphere of companies? Well, because they created nostalgia for us. That was a primary reason why a lot of us got these arcade cabinets. They were fun, don't get me wrong. We aren't going to buy something that isn't fun. But it's the nostalgia that they created with these cabinets. I mean, when we were able to play Street Fighter 2, we were kind of shot right back to when we were kids playing this. When they created Asteroids, when they created Pac-Man, when they created all these different arcades with Gen 1, with Rampage, with, with Dig Dug, they were huge in kind of creating this influence on us to go, oh my gosh, I remember the better times. And that's what they did. That's what was so great. Now, as Time Crisis, as we think about it, is in the community that's already bought all of these cabinets, is it creating nostalgia for you? That's just a question I have because it doesn't for me. It's not something I'm excited for. Now, is Arcade 1UP becoming too long in the tooth? I've seen that said on a couple uh, of people's YouTube, like videos that they've been posting about Arcade 1UP. Now, I don't think that that's a very wise or kind of valid argument to say that they're kind of long in the tooth. I think with 3 million cabinets sold in 2022, they're doing okay. They're doing pretty well. I don't think that many at games home uh, have been sold. I don't think that many II arcades have been sold. And I think those two companies are still going strong. I think uh, RK one up is still going strong. This is just an incredible time to be an arcade fan. And though the golden age of arcades may be kind of neglected right now with Time Crisis and Fast and the Furious potentially coming out, potentially, we can kind of take heart because they're gonna continue to put out golden age. They're gonna continue to put out 80s cabinets that we all know and love. That's just what they're gonna do. They have to do it. It would make no sense for them not to do that. So be encouraged, take heart. This is an amazing community. We, we want to envelop everybody that we can to encourage you guys to watch some videos, to encourage to, to be positive in this community because there's so much to be thankful for. So for now, thank you so much for watching this. Keep outrunning the neon sun. And as always, please, please encourage people, bless people, be a positive influence in this community, and I will see you guys soon. God bless.